Welcome to the Grace of Eugene podcast. We exist to help every person in our sphere of influence to encounter Christ, experience biblical community, and extend God's kingdom. You can learn more about us at gracecityeugene.com. Here's the podcast. Well, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Extended Cut. We are back after a few week break here. Yes, who's back? It's us. It's we're, us. We're back again. Mm-hmm. Hope you had a great holiday season. At this point, that feels so far away that it's like, why even say that? But the reality was, but it you was just like did. 10 days ago, 11 days ago when this comes out. Uh, but seriously, hope that you've had a good last few weeks. We're excited to bring the extended cut back as a supplement here to kind of throw on after our Sunday sermons. Yes. We get to uh, recap Pastor Chris's sermon uh, from our Vision Sunday that happened this last week. So we're excited to do that. But before we get into that, let's talk about what's upcoming at Grace City Church. You see, I had that really fun song last time, but maybe this time we'll play no song. song. We made the song. Uh, Probably most pertinent, what's upcoming for us, we've got a prayer and worship night uh, this Friday night. It's going to be epic. It's going to be so good. We're going to have two C's. Two C's. We're going to have a full band. We are going to have some really incredible prayer ministry moments. Um, this might look a little different than maybe some of the years past where we kind of treat it like a just more amplified worship night than kind of what we do on the weeknights of our week of prayer and fasting. But um, we really we want to pray over you and we want to pray over your friends and people that you bring in. Um, we want this to be a place where we can really let the spirit move to identify needs for healing and for peace for the Holy Spirit to fill people. It's going to be a really special uh, and, and powerful night. And so we'd love to see you there. It's going to be this Friday at 6 p.m. at 2533 Crescent Ave, where we usually meet for church. It's going to be a really great time. Uh, do you have anything to add for the prayer and worship night? Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Yes. Uh, we've also got some men's and women's social events coming up. I believe January uh, 15th, Sunday evening, is going to be the women's. They're doing a recipe exchange. The men on the 21st are doing a breakfast together. A couple really great things. You can find all the details and registration information at gracecityeugene.com on our events page. Please do that. Um, we were recapping all of our social events at the Grace City Top 10 a couple weeks ago, and uh Last year was just so fun, getting in the rhythm of having these. And so we're super excited to bring them back, to have opportunities for our church community to uh, to be friends, to hang out, to grow in relationship. And uh, it's going to really spur on just a lot of really great realities for our church this year. It's true. So we're excited for that. Good. Yes. And then our final thing that we want to encourage you to do is to uh, fill out the life group interest form. Went out in the e-weekly last week. It'll go out again this week. If you hear this podcast and you need that form, reach out to me, reach out to Chris. We'll get it to you. Uh, Life Group's kicking up next week. We're going to have three different options that you can sign up for. Two on Wednesday night, one on Thursday night, one that's going to be campus focused. It's not campus exclusive, but it is going to be a place that we're encouraging our college students to jump in. Mm -hmm. And if you have a heart for the campus, we also encourage you to jump in and Yes. Be there to care for them, to love them, minister uh, to them, and and be ministered to by them uh, through throughout the following uh, term. It's going to be really, really special. And so those are a few things that we've got going on. As always, you can stay up to date at gracecityeugene.com or by following us on social media at Grace City Eugene. All it's right, really Pastor Chris, let's talk about Sunday. But before I do, but before you do, if you have not yet listened to this week's sermon, this won't make a ton of sense. So you can go to any of your streaming video platforms, check out, um, it's titled Own It, spoiler alert on the topic, Mm -hmm. and uh, make sure you listen to that, stop here, and then come back once you're done. But anyway, now we've got that out of the way, this week, um, 
we talked about how last week was kind of a reflection, reflecting on God's faithfulness and the highlights from the previous year. This year is a word from God for this coming year, where our focus should be, what we believe he's going to do, what we can anticipate for this year. And what I talked about was um, kind of upgrading our our faith and um, taking ownership of it. So I unpacked how, for me at least, and I believe for others, there can be these kind of iterations of the, the level in which we engage our faith. And that is um, at first when we receive our faith or um, a word from somebody or prayer or encouragement or a, a touch from God, we can just be kind of like that posture of like, well, thanks. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Yes, I, 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 that's great. And then we can go from like that to, okay, I believe that's available to me. And then there's a step further that I encourage us into is like, no, taking ownership of it, activating it, applying it to our lives. Mm -hmm. And so not just being passive receivers of our faith, but taking a hold of it, owning it and seeing it applied and walked out in our everyday lives. Whether that's just your lordship with Jesus, whether that's your calling, your purpose, your mission, your new identity and what that means for you and everybody around you. And so that was kind of the basic gist of it. And we talked about um, you know, stages of that as well, how uh, oftentimes we come up in our faith on a borrowed faith, right? Mm-hmm. From family, friends, somebody else that introduced us to Jesus, but we're not supposed to stay there, yeah. that we need to take ownership and step out of that. We talked about a couple of things that owning our faith does. And one is that we're proud of it. We're not ashamed of it. We're happy to talk with others about it. We use that analogy. When you buy a house, you're putting up that picture. You're like, check it out. I saved up. I, I invested in this. You're, you're proud of something you own. Uh, we talked also, kind of landed the plane, it, that we we share it. Mm. When you own something, you have the right to share it and what that looks like and the impact that can make in this final charge for our community to wholly live out what we have received from the Lord and see that make an impact. And so it's kind of the basic gist of it. It wasn't like a huge concept, but it definitely was something that... Um, needs to to engage our heart at a deep level sure and and we believe God wants to to flow out of it so no and I I I really loved this message and one of the things that I really appreciated was the um, kind of list of contrasting what it's like when you own something versus just when you have borrowed it or received it from someone else And that there are different levels. There's a different kind of pride you have Mm -hmm. when you recognize that, like, this is mine. I have received this. This was was designated for me. I'm going to care for it differently. I'm going to steward it differently. And um, that was just such a cool lens to think through all of these different ideas. Um, So I I really enjoyed this message and thought it was such a a pertinent word for our community for the year. You know, last year, our our big theme was kind of pursue or pursuit was kind of our Mm -hmm. our big goal for the year. And um, I really just like this, that it's like we've we've been doing things in small groups where we're trying to (laughs) identify giftings and we're trying to give some practical, tangible ideas of how you can go practice it and how you can do these things and whatnot. And, And now just kind of this message of like, Many of you have received what you need. You know what you've got. It's been identified. It's been promised. It's been called out. Yeah. Now it's time to own it. It's time to do it. And that's just such an exciting really thing to get to be called into and to get to step into as a yeah. faith community. It's really good. Well, let's dive into some of our questions. Um, and this one might be especially um, unique since it's kind of like a vision Sunday. This isn't just like a you know, one Sunday and then we're kind of moving on to the next thing the following week or or even in a series. It's kind of like this is a word for the year. Mm-hmm. This is a an idea that we want to hold on yeah. to that is going to come up throughout our week of prayer and fasting that might come up at men's and women's retreats down the road. Like it's going to be a theme that we try to infuse throughout yeah. the year. So what what's difficult when you're trying to put together something when there are so many other great words that right. could come for for a year. In this particular one, like last year, God gave me the word and then I had to seek him for the heart behind it. Mm. This year, I feel like God gave me the heart and then I had to be like, what word do I put or phrase sure. do I put to this? <laughs> and it's actually like, I appreciate 
uh, elements of both, but trying to still there. I mean, I was having conversations with you. It was like, it could be this, it could be this, it could be this. Like, I don't know the, the phrase or the word or the specific way to frame it, but gosh, I know what God wants to, sh- wants yeah. to impart to our community. And so, um, that was uniquely challenging, um, in trying to figure that out. Especially it's like, I can't just say something and then like, I don't remember in a couple weeks anyway, like you said, this is going to be something that we're going to revisit. We believe is uh, a um, posture for our church for this year. Mm. And when I say that, I don't mean just for this year. I mean, something that God wants to establish in us this year that next year we don't have to say, this is the word for a year again, right. we're building upon it. Right. right. And so pursuit doesn't go away in 2023. It's there, it's built, and now we're building upon that. And the goal is that all of these things become a part of our culture and DNA, not just, oh, whew, I'm done with that one. I can yep. move on to the next course load, yep. right? And so um, so because of that and how I believe God wants to use this and the, the anointing and power that I believe is in that sort of thing, um, there's some reverence in sure. where you settle. Sure. Um, so, yeah. mm. On the other side of it, what's... What brings joy in putting together a message like this? It was it was really easy outside of that because it wasn't me. It was like I'm typing some stuff down and then like just this one liner comes to mind of it's not this, it's this. I'm like, Whoa, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was just through time spent in seeking God in prayer. Yeah. And he just my my heart was tuned to his mm. in this area. Um, I've heard it put, uh, like when you tune a guitar, there's a certain frequency baseline that things are tuned on that everything is built upon and you have to get that right. Like you like I'm tuning in this frequency yeah. and then everything is tuned relative to that. And I feel like that, that God did that work in me mm. so that everything else relative to it just, just worked. Yeah. And, uh, there wasn't like a bunch of friction and trying to get it there. Dissonance like, ah, it was just like, oh. Okay, mm. we, we got it. It was it was very settled. Um, it was something that I didn't have to conjure up or manufacture passion for. Sure. Um, and so, yeah, that was that was really fun. It once I distilled down. Here's here's what we're gonna do as far as the verbiage. It was just, it flowed and it was fun and it it had to preach it to myself. Yeah. Right, work work it out in my own heart so that. And that's something I don't think people realize. And maybe we've mentioned this before. We've done a few of these now. But um, a lot of the words and even a lot of the sermons I preach, like, they're convicting. Like, there's there's some surgery to happen. There's some um, challenging realities that the Bible calls us to. Mm-hmm. And I never preach out of a place of having arrived into harmony in those areas sure. or having figured it out. I spend at least the week before repenting, working out my faith in this area so that when I preach it, it's not from a place of personal agenda or trying to present something that I'm not willing to go that place sure. either. And so um, I don't know how we got there, but that's no, that's, great. that's that's part of it is like, man, this is, there was a joy in working that out in my own heart and mm okay, what does this look like for me? And in that process, some illustrations come up. Like, well, it's like this for you. Like, oh, that's God. I'll use this car thing. Oh, yeah, when I used to borrow tools, like, that wasn't my goal. But, man, I needed that to learn. And just some of those illustrations that that came up came out of me working through it with the Lord. Mm. So that's really good. Yeah, I, I always enjoy a good word of the year sermon a vision sunday kind of thing i i just think it's so cool you know there's so many ways we can uh complicate messaging for a community or or maybe when we're putting together like our new year's resolutions we're like hey I, these are the 10 things i want to do in 2023 and it's right. like that's an overwhelming list like 10 different things and so i i just even love the the joy of saying, hey, this is going to be a priority for us. This this one thing, we're going to try to grow in this mm-hmm. this this year. And the next year, we'll get to build on it. Yeah. We're building from last year's one thing that we really focused on that that was infused in this and that and came out mm-hmm. in these sermons and all that. And so, and we saw it happen. Yeah. It wasn't just a word. Like, God did that. Yep. 
at the level of which our church could handle it or our size could engage in that way. But man, it happened. Yeah. And it wasn't because of any of our awesomeness. It's like, hey, this is what God's going to do. Let's get ready. Like right. that was, it was really cool to see. Yeah. yeah. No, it's very good. Oh, uh, you picked a passage from Ephesians. Yes, sir. What was kind of the thinking, the the feel behind that? What was the even maybe the journey of getting to that passage? Because it's sometimes like <laughs> talk like you don't know, like well, what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Well, I just topical sermons are different. Yeah. Um, it's it's easy when you've said we're gonna preach through these instances in John, like we're going to in our upcoming series, and you get to pick your point from. <laughs> that versus I've got this thing from the Lord, but now I've got to find what's, what's the biblical support. Where's, where's, where's God put this in his text so mm-hmm. that this isn't just a, a fun, good idea from me, but it's something that has some substance and some rootedness in the word. Yeah. How do you distill down to one or a few scriptures the concept of lordship? Right. Of Jesus calls the shots, right. and we need to get in line with that. Because that, in essence, that's what this is. Sure. Like, here's what he says to do. Are we going to do it, or are we going to try to put that off on somebody else right. like we do too many other things in our lives? Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I was so excited to preach the word in the heart that I skipped over a paragraph of how this applied to my message. <laughs> Oh, Lord, I apologize. Um, So this idea of going from receiving to owning obviously led me to Ephesians. That was the the thing. Sure. But what I wanted to do was unpack the fullness of the first verse where Paul's talking about, as a prisoner for the Lord, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling. Mm -hmm. And the the connection between living a life worthy and taking ownership of it. Mm -hmm. That, so living a life worthy of the calling, whatever it is that God's given you that you've received. And so really it's that first verse. And then he goes on to talk about humble, gentle, patient. And I could have done an hour and a half, two hour sermon just on these six verses with this part. Like there was so much there that I had to restrain, but really it comes down to that, that first verse. Like Paul was a prisoner for the Lord. He was not living in his mansion in the Hamptons and writing letters because he was on vacation. He needed some hymn time. (laughs) And he's urging them after he unpacks all that they have received through and in Jesus to live a life worthy of what they've received, which means taking it to a next step. Hey, you've received it. Now it's time to grow it, to own it, to see it applied in your life. And that that's what really led me to this text. I think the book of Ephesians could be preached every year, yeah. like over and over, and it would never get old. Um, but anyway, that's that's kind of what... What took us to that journey? And so that's great. Yeah, that was the one thing I was like, in the extended cut, I need to. And so, thank you for doing this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. As we kind of land the plane, just any other pieces of your heart for this word and for our community or. Should folks just show up to the prayer and worship night on Friday for more of that? I mean, yes, you need to be there. And like, I will rarely say, like, whatever you do, be there. But like whatever you do, be there. Yeah. Bring your friends. Bring anyone that is interested in encountering and knowing more about who Jesus is. Yeah. And that's not because there's going to be a message that tells them. It's because there's going to be evidence of God's power, Him working in a community in people, and that's what's going to preach on yeah. Friday night. Um, as far as anything else that I would add to it, um, when you own a house, you live in it. When you own something, you inhabit it, you utilize it. You, Your desire should be to mm. see the fullness of that thing applied in your life. Um, and so, like, what does that look like for us walking out our faith? It looks like that we, we utilize the fullness of God's word and what it means to us. Mm. The fullness of our community, the fullness of the opportunities to gather together. Um whether it's a prayer meeting, a worship night, a Sunday gathering, a social, a kids event, a church camping trip, whatever it is, like utilize the fullness of what it means to own and walk out your faith in the context of the place in the community that God has planted you in his word, his heart, his purposes for you will not return void. Yeah. And this is not a year to sit back and wait on the Lord for him to 
tell you and make you his puppet in what you do next. This is a year to activate what God has already planted in you and see that activate in others. Mm. And so I just, I urge you, like, this is a year. It's time to get off the bench, get up off the couch, get out of your house, make yourself uncomfortably available to be used by him, to be used in the lives of others. And he will do amazing things in you. He will mature you. He will give you words. He, I, this is this is it for this year. Yeah. And there's a lot of other stuff that's going to happen and a lot of other stuff that will come out of that. Um, but this is not a year to stand passively by and hope that something will happen. We have hope in Jesus, but we know things are going to happen. We know that he's moving and that he wants to use us. We don't have to sit and wonder. Yeah. Does he want to do something? Absolutely. Absolutely he does. But how is he going to if you're just in your house, if you don't show up, if you don't own what he has put in you? Mm. And so, anyway, I digress. What about you, Casey? What would you, what, what really popped off and do you feel is the most important thing that people take that they uh, grab onto out of this um, what would you encourage them in yeah um, for part, probably part of what I was sharing earlier after your summary um, many of us are aware of how, how and where and what it looks like for what God has called us to do we know that God's put that neighbor on our heart. And it's been months since we've gone out of our way to really initiate conversation, to invite him over for dinner. Like, you know, coworkers, folks that, that need healing, that are going through difficult things, but you've just never worked up the courage to like really say, hey, can I invite you into something that I think is really going to, give you hope? Can I pray for you? Can I be near to you? Can I be your friend? Mm -hmm. I think so many of us are aware and can identify things that we've learned in small groups or from Sundays, ways that God has called each of us to to live out this calling, to walk out this faith. And it's time that we do it. Mm -hmm. Um, That for some of these instances... I don't want to say this. This can come across in a like a guilt-inspiring way, but but then maybe on some level there is like the, but there there is an urgency mm-hmm. to the people around us and the mission of God. There are things that happen. There are people that go by having not heard or received the love of God. Like I've I've had neighbors come and go that I've I've realized like man I should have gone out of my way. I'm probably the only one on my street that that had what it took to do something like that. And I, I just never did it. And this year, may it be a year that we can look back and we're like, yeah. I did everything I could yeah. to walk this out, to own my giftings, my calling, yeah. these, these urges that God's put on my heart. I didn't just let them sit yes. in the back as a good idea. But I, I followed that. I stepped into it as faithfully as I could and believed that God was going to use me yeah. to do something. Yeah. I think that's that's my heart. That's what I personally feel convicted to do this year. And uh, it's, it's what I hope our, our community can really receive yes. and walk into this year as well. And then to God be the glory. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There we go. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of The Extended Cut. Yes. Please share it with someone you love, someone that maybe you knew was at uh, church on Sunday, but maybe they don't listen to the podcast. Uh, we do this every single week, as long as we can, and uh, besides some winter breaks and different things like that. Yeah. But we'll be back from here on out, so we're excited to hang out with you every Wednesday morning when this drops. Uh, tell someone you love them. Pray for someone this week. We'll see you at the prayer and worship night. Go to gracecityeugene.com to get signed up for all those other cool things that we've got going on. And we'll see you very soon. See you later.